Um, Richard Tice is here. Very good morning to you. Uh, very good morning to you. I mean, it's, it's hard to know where to begin. It really it is. It really is. I suppose we should begin uh, with the by-elections because we've had the three yeah. results there. And uh, look, in a sense, it's remarkable because, yes, the Tories have lost. Mm. Uh, they've lost two seats. But unexpectedly, they've held on to Uxbridge. Yes. Um, from our own perspective, we've secured more votes than we've ever secured before in a by-election. But what it proves is, so in one by-election, mm. we beat Labour. Right. In another by-election, we beat the Libs. Right. But by-elections are all about tactical voting. Yes. And you've seen it in every single of those three seats. So in the North East, mm. basically, the majority voted Labour to get rid of uh, the Conservatives. Yes. Uh, to the, give them a bloody nose, to give effectively. Them a, a, effectively, a bloody nose. Down in the South West, in Somerton and Froome, Everybody voted Lib Dem mm. to get rid of the Conservative. Yeah. But on the key issue... But the Labour, lo Labour lost their deposit, didn't they, in the uh, South West? That's right. Yeah. Uh, that's right. And uh, and we beat them in the South West. But the key issue in London, of course, yeah. where uh, it was in Uxbridge, everyone assumed... Because that was the smallest majority that the Conservatives had of about 7,000. Right. Everybody assumed that that would be a walkover for the Labour candidate. You remember the flip-flopping of Keir Starmer? Yes. They suddenly realised... ULES is a massive, massive, massive issue, the, their planned expansion right. of this, this money-grabbing uh, cash tax on the poor. And incredibly, actually, uh, people voted tactically mm. um, with the Conservatives to ensure that a clear message was sent back to Sadiq Khan and Keir Starmer mm. that the London people of London do not want this ULES expansion. I actually believe they don't want ULES full stop. No. So it was a pretty remarkable mm. thing. So what people should take away is the power of tactical voting. And this is the second time after a by-election for a council seat in Cambridge City a few weeks ago where a Conservative was elected for the first time in 12 years right. who stood purely on not standing for the, the tax on the poor with this congestion charge right. they were planning. So this is really remarkable. It is a, it's, it's and what I would say to people mm. is actually use your vote and vote against these mad... Uh, cash grabbing taxes yeah. on the poor, which is all driven and, and by the net zero and also anti car. Uh, the, the sort of yeah, brigade. it's all anti motorist, anti poor. It's it's a cash grab by Khan, by other councils uh, to make up the coffers. Right. And it's uh, yeah, it's all it's all driven by wrong data, complete yeah. misunderstanding. Here's a question of facts. for you: Do you think, as I do, that an awful lot of this sort of ramping up of the climate, um, you know, catastrophe? was this week because of these elections. Do you wonder if the BBC are fighting this fight? Because it suddenly went a bit quiet yesterday, you know, because it turned out that all of the kind of, uh, you know, mad estimates of 45-degree heat, 50-degree heat in places like Sicily, it wasn't happening, and I, they stopped talking about it. I, I think all of this is possible. It is the establishment, in every which way, uh. trying to terrify and basically dumb down mm. the people. And in many areas, we're actually seeing, do you know what? We're rising up voters have started to rise up and say we're not having yeah. it and you've seen uh, Nigel Farage with the uh, the whole banking scandal at Coots which has now sort of morphed into mm. Nat West yeah. uh, that is that is essentially you know Nigel on behalf of of tens of thousands of people has risen up and he's called them out on it and it's utterly remarkable you've seen you've seen the chief exec of Nat West a bank of 19 million customers have to do a groveling apology to Nigel You've see, they've got um, a Facebook page of 10,000 NatWest customers who've had their accounts shut. Right. They've all put in or are putting in subject access requests. So this is a disaster, not just for Coots, yeah. but for uh Well, I saw Piers Morgan last night and you were on the That's show. That's right. He's going to write, he's written to them to say not That's only does right. he want them on his show, but he's not sure, he, although he did, he did say he wasn't sure if he was going to go for the for the access documents, but, but he's questioning whether or not he should keep his account there. Absolutely right. People are absolutely appalled by this. And there's another breaking story before we get on to uh, uh, dear old Simon mm. Jack. Yeah. So in the Telegraph this morning, online, I think it is, not in the paper, Simon Heffer, a well-known journalist, yeah. he's written the fact that because he was a friend of Nigel, just a friend, mm. um, who he bumps into a couple of times a year, when he tried to, to top up his pension with a well-known financial services company called Standard Life, yeah. uh, a couple of months ago, they phoned him up and says, well, we're not really sure we want your top up because you're a friend of Nigel Farage. Incredible. I mean, I'll just repeat that. Right. The whole city of London is embroiled in this absolute outrage. You've got a pension firm, Standard Life, yeah. saying, I'm not sure I want your money because you're a friend of Nigel. I mean, it's utterly, 
utterly bewildering I mean, and, and, as, and as he writes, Simon, he says, a lot of my friends do not even know I'm a friend of Nigel Farage, so how on earth did people in the financial services industry who handle the highly confidential, highly confidential area of my investments know it? And why, to put it bluntly, was it any of their business? It's none of their business. Right. So does that mean that Standard Life are literally spying? on Simon Heffer. Right. So I've tweeted out today to the chief executive, one Stephen Bird, mm. of Standard Life. Yeah. He needs to explain. He needs to apologise. Yeah. I tell you what, we are going to take on these people Absolutely. in these financial services. We're calling them out. I've written two subject access requests yes. to Metro Bank and to Tide Bank. We are absolutely steaming furious with these people. Yes, and so you should be. And thank goodness for you and Nigel Farage and the other people who will, will join the fight because this is absolutely outrageous. It's typical, you know, of what is the worst aspect of British class life. Yeah. It's the worst aspect of the sort of old boys network. You're not one of us, therefore we can't talk to you. We can't invite you into the club. And quite frankly, we don't, we'd don't. we rather you didn't exist. The BBC is run like that. The city apparently is run like that. What an absolute outrage. It is. Ab I mean, it really is. And, but we've got to have the courage to put our head above the parapet. And if it's happened to anybody who's listening or watching, if you've yeah. suddenly had a, any form of account shut yeah. or anything strange happen, send in a subject access request. You can get a template mm. online and and just ask the right questions. We have to do this. We have to fight back. Yeah. We it's, have to take uh, back control, basically. We have basically have to take back control of our freedom, mm. our liberty, yeah. our democracy. Because let's face it, these financial organisations are only really running as a result of the money that we give them in good faith so that they can actually invest it and make more money for us. Without our money, they wouldn't have a business. And in some of these businesses, like now, it's our money that propped them up after mm. their appalling well, failures more back directly. in 2008. Yeah, even more directly. So the taxpayer still owns almost 39% mm. of NatWest. When it, when it turned out they couldn't even do what, what it said on the tin, yeah. which was to run a banking organisation without running into debt. But there's another key thing here, which yeah. is that the, the chief exec of NatWest, who has written a grovelling letter of apology mm. to Nigel, the night before... Simon Jack broke the story mm. about whether or not Nigel was wealthy enough to be a, a customer of Coots. Yeah. He, he broke that story at 10 o'clock on, on one morning. Uh, the previous night, he sat next to this lady, Dame mm. Alison Rose, yes. the chief exec of NatWest, at a dinner. Seems a bit of a coincidence, it does. doesn't it? And worse than that, it was a BBC dinner. It was a dinner that was uh, put on by the BBC, presumably at our expense, uh, which the great and the good were invited to sit around uh, and trash everybody they didn't like. Um, and we apparently are supposed to live with that. We're supposed to put up with that. Simon Jack this morning has finally broken cover and put his head out of the foxhole that he's been sitting in for the last three days and given what can only be described as the world's worst apology, not an apology at all. He has said the headline on the Farage story, I mean, you can't even say Nigel Farage, has been clarified and an update posted. It should have been clearer at the top that the reason for Mr Farage's account being closed was commercial was what a source told the BBC. That has been corrected. So nowhere in there is the word sorry. Uh, nowhere in, the, in there is the words I was misled by my source. Nowhere in there uh, is any kind of clarification of how he got it so wrong. It's unbelievable. I mean, he is an individual yeah. and he should have the decency and the, the moral integrity as a human being on this planet to say, I got it wrong, Nigel, I'm very sorry. Yes, in the way that actually John Sopel did. In the way did. that John Sopel did, and he did address him as Nigel, and, and you know, he, he just said, I'm sorry. So why Simon Jack finds it so hard, mm. uh, to use that simple word, when you've completely messed up, screwed up and got it wrong, right. just say sorry. Don't try and mealy mouth cover it up yeah. like some weasel. Yes, I've said Simon knows Jack about apologising, <laughs> which I think is quite clear, even for me at this time of the morning. But I mean, what the hell is the BBC doing? Are they employing liars? Are they employing ah, well. people who actually, you know, when they apply for the job, they say, look, how good are you at lying? Oh, brilliant. Great. You can have the job. How good are you apologise? No, I never apologise. Fine. You're you, absolutely in. You, you could be the business you're editor. You're the man for the job. Yeah. How, how do you feel about Alicante? You're very hot there. Off you go. You could be the climate editor. Well, I mean, just... Uh, I mean, there's some clowns running this place. It's unbelievable. Well, maybe after the break we'll talk about the climate thing, because that is we absolutely should. scandalous. We absolutely should. We've got to take a little break. Uh, Richard Tice is here. Uh, if you're working for the BBC, uh, if I were you, I would hang my head in shame and resign immediately. It is clearly a bankrupt organisation full of overpaid, overstaffed idiots. This is Talk TV. <laughs> 